going back with more tennises. So let's pick it up where we left things the last time. And we're now on day seven. Saturday, yay! Saturday finally comes. And not a moment too soon. I'm left standing by myself in front of the train station. Despite still being in spring, the hot, humid air is more reminiscent of summer. I stand in a small patch of shade, desperately fanning myself with my own hand to avoid dying of a heat stroke. So far, I haven't been very successful. Shuichi made the last minute decision that we should all go out this weekend to spend some quality time with friends. Of course, this time we made sure to check if Saya would be available to go out this weekend. It was tough for her, but she managed to make some adjustments to her schedule to have her afternoon shift covered today. Which brings me to where I am now. Where the hell is everyone? My phone's clock tells me it's already 9.40. It was supposed to be here ten minutes ago. I think I'm starting to have a deja vu. Hector-san. Yep, definitely deja vu. June's voice echoes from amidst the crowd, making me turn my head sideways to search for him. My eyes finally find him walking towards me. Kaycoon also seems to be walking right behind him. Sure, don't scream out in the middle of the street, you idiot. Ah! Realisation dawns on him. The tiger then covers his mouth with both of his hands. Many of the passers-by are now staring at the two of them in curiosity. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Kaycoon starts bowing frantically to every person that happens to sneak a glance. Meanwhile, June starts fidgeting around where he stands. From the look on his face, I'd say he just realised how many people are actually around here at the time. Now my arm is the one having deja vu. Why are you two causing a commotion first thing in the morning? It takes me a while to make my way around the people who've somewhat stopped moving look at the two morons who just caused the scene. But it's not like this was my idea, he just screamed out all of a sudden. Oh. June is fidgeting in place, his eyes glued to the floor in embarrassment. I try giving him an encouraging pat on the back. Oh, don't worry about it so much. Just try not to stand out that much next time. Oh. My words seem to have the opposite effect. Oh well, nothing I can do about that. By the way, Keikun, have you seen Shuichi yet? If I had, don't you think he'd be with us already? Good point. Well, it's worth a shot anyway. Can we go someplace less crowded? I see June shaking as he tries to reach my arm, which I quickly move away from his grasp. No, sorry, I love my arm way too much to let you do that again. Oh, Jeez, I can understand not liking crowds. I myself feel claustrophobic in them, but this... Oh, this is too much. Hector San, please get him somewhere more quiet for his mental breakdown. I'll wait for her after here. Ah, all right then. Uh, thanks, Keikun. Come on, June, let's go to that sweet shop we visited last time. Oh. Not even capable of forming complete sentences anymore. Got it. As we go inside, this sweet smell of cinnamon pleasantly tickles my nose. Well, I don't remember smelling anything like this last time. Welcome to Ah Hector Cool. Standing behind the counter is the class rep who flashes us a radiant smile as we come closer. Class rep, what are you doing here? Uh, oh my, that's true, you don't know about it. Oh, my family actually owns this store, so I help around part time. She finally notices June standing next to me, clinging to my shirt and quaking from his fear of crowds. Oh dear, what's happened to poor Junku? Crowds. Despite my incredibly short explanation, she gives me a knowing smile, grabbing a bonbon behind the counter and walking over to us. Uh, Junku, would you like a sweet? It's on the house. A warm smile and the smell of the chocolate snapped June out of his trance. He looks her up and down and shyly takes the bonbon from her hand. Thank you. She puts her hand on the cheek, giggling cheerfully. Oh, he's so cute, isn't he? June finally lets go of my shirt, carefully unwrapping the small truffle in his hand and popping it in his mouth. Uh, so, a rap. Oh, no need to call me that when we're out of the school. Just call me Higher-chan. Uh, 
um, Ayako-san. He actually came by last week and we didn't see him. Um, I usually work here after class on weekdays and in the morning on Saturdays. Ah, could it be you came around on a Sunday? I usually have that day off. Yeah, that was it. Still, your family owns this shop, huh? Wow. Must be pretty good money having a business right in the main street. Oh yes. We also have some of the best sweets in town, if I do say so myself. I'm actually training to inherit this shop from my grandfather. I try and manage in the class rep as a business owner. Somehow a lax personality doesn't seem to fit the ruthless image of a business owner I have in my mind. What kinds of sweets do you sell here anyway? Last time we came around we only saw traditional Japanese sweets. Oh yes, we mainly sell those, but we also make some western sweets too. Nowadays you have to market to every crowd you can. And, if I'm being honest, I happen to prefer the western sweets anyway. By the way, Junku, the one you just ate is one of our new confections. It's a sweet milk cinnamon dough filled with dust, dust of lesh and covered in chocolate. We started selling it just last week and have been selling out for every day. Wow, it sounds like it's become pretty popular. How much does it cost to let me pay for jewels? Oh, don't be silly, that's on the house. I'm just glad to be able to help. If you'd like to buy some sweets for yourself, I actually have a display with some samples you can try. I glance at June, who's in trance, watching rotate and display of mini cakes, as the unregistered a conversation going on around him. I much prefer him like this, so I think I'd rather stay indoors for now. Sure, why not? I hear the door open as I'm walking around the shop, sampling a few sweets. Ah, oh, you two are. Seriously, at least I can see a phone. I turn around to see Shuichi and Keikun standing at the door. Oh, hello, Shukun, Keichan. K Keichan? Ah, I <clears throat> ah, Ayako chan. Oh, I didn't know you were working part time too. Well, sort of. My family owns this store, you see, so I help around when I can. Would you guys like to try some samples too? She smiles so warmly it's hard not to feel at ease in her presence. I completely take back what I said. Just a natural gift as a saleswoman. Shuichi and Keiku look at each other for a few seconds, if pondering what to do, before finally shrugging and walking over to the display. Well, I already decided what I'm going to get, uh, Minayaku-san. Could you give me two of each of the sweets I've tried? Oh my, that's a lot. Are you sure about this, hector -kun? You want me to try and decide what you can and can't do, but imagine all that sugar wouldn't be good for an athlete. <laughs> Don't worry about it, I'm not going to eat all of them by myself. I'm taking some of my brother and my mother too. I see. What a good son and brother you are. Alright, would you like me to pack them inside a paper bag or a sweets box? The box costs extra, but it makes for a great gift. Hmm. How about you pack those four in the bag and the rest in the box? Now I can eat mine without unpacking the box. Oh yes, good choice. Just a second. She comes back in less than a minute with my order neatly packed in a brown paper bag, and a box filled with sweets in her other hand. Here you go, be 2010 yen. Okay, just a sec. Ah. I look back and see June still walking up and down the shop, looking at all the sweets in sight. Good thing we're the only ones here, otherwise I can imagine how disturbing this would be for other patrons. Uh, June, is there something you want? I'll buy it for you. Ah, uh, really? I nod and his whole face just lights up. Oh, Hector, how come you don't make me the same offer? You have money to buy your own sweets, stop being such a mooch. Oh, shut up. You two just go looking for a reason to squabble, it's just come naturally to you. Uh, well, I'm glad to see you're all just as energetic outside of school as you are inside it. I'm not, you're not the one who has to deal with them all day. Oh, shut up, shut it. Oh my, you two are more compatible than I thought. The two both look at each other at the same time before they both look away with the huff. Why are you making it worse? <laughs> I'm sorry, it just gets really dull here sometimes. June sheepishly walks up to the counter. Um, Hector Sank, can I take one of each of these? I want to bring some for my parents too. June points to five different sweets, two bonbons and three mini strawberry shortcakes. Is this really all you're taking, for you and your parents? He nods slowly. From the way he stares long in the at them, I can already imagine he's embarrassed of asking for more. Ayako-san, can you give me three of each of these inside a box? What? For a half second she looks stunned, then she giggles looking very pleased. 
Oh, that's so sweet of you. You're such a good friend. All right, I'll be right back. Come on, Hector Sand, that's too much. No, it's not. Don't worry about it. I'm not anywhere close to being over my budget anyway, and I won't hear no for an answer. But. The class rep soon comes back with a tall box wrapped in some very pretty gift paper and hands it to me. She also leans in close to my ear and whispers something. I'm going to give you a 50% discount on this. Just pretend it's the full price. I nod along. That'll be uh, 2,345 yen plus your own box. Okay. I fish inside my wallet for a 5,000 yen bill and hand it to her. Oh, thank you for your patronage. Uh, what about you boys? Have you decided on anything? As the two make their orders, I hand June sweets from inside a plastic bag. Here, yeah, enjoy. Oh, thank you, Hector Sam. Instead of taking the bag I'm holding off my hand, he suddenly gives me a tight hug. Despite being caught by surprise, I don't pull away, instead giving him a few pats on his back as he buries his face in my chest. Oh my. I look back to see the class rep covering her mouth with her hands, her face red. Shuichi and Case K are standing next to each other, grinning. All right, you two. Maybe don't do that inside the store in front of the main street. People are looking at you through the window. I look out and see that, in fact, many people are passing by and staring at us as they do so. I quickly jump away from June, nearly knocking him down when I do so. Uh, sorry. Here's your sweets. He doesn't even look me in the eyes when he takes the bag from my hands. Ayako-san giggles. Damn it, my face feels so hot right now. Once we finish shopping around, we exit the store back out to the busy main street. We barely even left it and June already starts to freak out. Can we go somewhere, someplace else now? I don't like being out in the street. You know, you can have to get used to this sooner or later. The school trip is less than a month away. We've never gone anywhere that wasn't at least twice the size of Saitama. As I mention the school trip, June whines pitifully, making me roll my eyes in frustration. Ah, that's true, we have the school trip in July, huh? Oh, I need to talk to my father about it. Has the school already revealed where your class is going to? Uh, yeah, they did yesterday. It's Paris. Shuichi whistles in admiration. Oh, maybe I'll take the third year somewhere interesting this year too. Last year we went to the Chiba Prefecture. Didn't we go to Hong Kong when we were first years? Oh yeah, a Sai got food poisoned in front of some questionable dumplings and spent the rest of the trip in bed. All right, don't eat any foods that haven't been prepared by a restful restaurant. I'll keep that in mind. Well, I think it's less to do with the restaurant's reputation and more to do with us. Japanese people have pretty fragile stomachs. It doesn't take much to get us sick. Although radio percent of Japan's population is lactose intolerant, you can't really expect much from our stomachs. What am I supposed to do then, not eat? I'll stick to the food the hotel staff repairs, I'd say. What is even the point of visiting a foreign country then? The point is actually going around instead of staying stuck to your bed with indigestion. Okay, you win this time. Um, I feel someone grabbing onto my arm. When I look back, I see June at the edge of a breakdown clinging desperately to me. Oh no, not this again. He starts squeezing my arm again. I can already feel the blood flow being cut off. Okay, let's move it, people. I don't want to lose my arm. Shuichi pulls out his phone. Oh, it's still a bit early. Sarah so asked her to come to the diner for lunch so she could join us after her shift ends. But it's still a way too early for lunch. Uh, where should we go? Well, there's a library nearby. How about we go there? Really? A library? On our day off? Or we should go someplace where we can relax. How about we go to a tea parlour? There's a good one a couple of streets away. You know, I don't even like tea. You don't have to drink the tea, you can just have some snacks. Lunch is in less than two hours, we shouldn't be stuffing ourselves with food. Oh, you can show up a bit later. They serve lunch until 2pm anyway. There'd be no point in going in too early, so we'd have to wait around anyway. Yeah, anywhere is fine. He squeezes harder. Crap, my arm's tingling. Ow, 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 just pick some place already, I don't care where. Why don't we have Hector Sand shoes then? It'd be easy in arguing about it. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, what do you think? I choose... This cover tea sounds really good right now. Look, I'm not a huge fan of tea either, but the idea of going to a library on my day off is just... Oh, no. Oh, come on, they have fantasy there too. Yeah, but we're going out as friends. What would be the point of doing that if we're just going to go into a corner and read by ourselves? Oh. Yes, I knew you'd understand. 
Yeah, yeah, great. Can we please go already? I can barely feel my arm anymore. Oh, sure. Good guys, follow my lead. That means you stay put, Oroshihara. Ha ha, very funny. Just lead the way already. Shuichi leads us to a small, secluded shop that is a little distant from the main street. The place is mostly empty. Not that I can imagine a tea shop being packed, but the inside looks as far removed from a Japanese tea shop as I can imagine. As soon as we walk in, we are greeted by a small wolf boy who doesn't look to be much older than us. Uh, welcome, can I get you anything? He flashes us a toothy smile and hands us a small fly over their entire menu. Wow, it's really compact. Ah, Iratakun, it's nice to see you again. I've been a while since you last came by. Ah, oh, yeah, I've been getting that a lot recently. Uh, busy with schoolwork again? You always seem to disappear a couple of times a year when things start getting hectic. Yeah, I guess you can say that. Plus, senior year and all that. The pressure to get into a good college just eats up even more of my free time. Uh, Shuichi, introduce us. All right. Hey everyone, this is Tadanori Senpai. He was one of my seniors on the volleyball club back when I was the first year. Tadanori Senpai, this is everyone. You call that an introduction? I've got more useful information out of a name tag. Well, we don't use name tags here. This is just a small tea shop after all. And you are? Uh, Keisuke Roshihara, nice to meet you. Ah, from the Roshihara Corporation, right? Well, I didn't know Rata-kun was friends with such a big shot. A big shot? That's not... I'm Hector Mishimaya. It's a pleasure to meet one of Shuichi's former teammates. The wolf's smile widens, flashing some teeth. Ah, so you're the famous Hector I heard so much about while I was in the club with the Rata-kun here. Uh, Tadanori Senpai, not now. The wolf flashes a devious look as he turns away from Shuichi. Oh, Rata-kun here used to talk about you a lot. I think I heard your name more often than any of my teammates that year. Tadanori Senpai. Uh, don't be so uptight, Arada Kun. You should enjoy your youth while you still have it. You'd be more believable if you weren't laughing right now. Uh, why don't you guys have a seat and call me over when you're ready to order? Shuichi immediately begins pushing us towards some faraway seats. His attempt at getting us away from Tadanori san is praiseworthy but also incredibly obvious. Well, that was something. Kei Kun speaks up once we're finally seated. Say, Shuichi, did you really talk about me? Oh, shut up. Shuichi buries his red face in his arms. You keep saying that, it's going to turn into a catchphrase. Shuichi shoots him a dirty look, but Keikun cuts him off before he gets to say anything. Yeah, yeah, shut up, got it. Hmm. Hey, June, what are you thinking so hard about? Oh, I was trying to decide what I can order from the menu. At least it's not crazy expensive in here. I can pay for you if you want. Oh, thanks, but no thanks. I don't want to turn into a mooch. Unlike some people. Hey, I'm not a mooch. Well, you said that, consider I never mentioned any names. Well, I guess if the shoe fits. Don't go around thinking you're oh so slick. I know who you're talking about. Hey, if the shoe fits. Oh, I'll stuff the shoe down your throat. Boy, that escalated quickly. Sometimes I wonder how you two manage to be friends. Who says we're friends? That does. They both look at each other in the eye and then look away in disgust. Getting some real creepy twin vibes from you two. Shuichi groans. Seriously though, you two are oddly in sync today. Well, we can't disagree about everything all the time. That's the exact opposite of what you said earlier. Well, life's filled with contradictions. Could you please try making sense? Anyway, what are you guys thinking of ordering? I'm going to go with... Let me guess. Green tea. Bingo. Keikun examines his fly with the undivided attention you'd see from someone reading a very good book. Uh, Keikun, that's a very intense look you have on your face right now. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just... Just? I hate tea. He tosses his menu back on the table, leaning back in his seat with a heavy sigh. I'll just get a coffee. They don't really have anything of note other than a ridiculous amount of types of tea. Oh yeah, this place is kind of lacking in drinks other than tea. It's sort of aimed towards people who love tea the most. It's one of the biggest selections in the city. I'm sure we could find something you'd like if we... I'll have a coffee. Okay, and certainly nothing but coffee. I don't appreciate the mockery. Oh, too bad, I do. Just when it looks like they're going to start arguing again. Could you two cut it out? There are people staring at us. Two start looking around and realise that most of the people in the tea shop are staring intently at them. Oh, sorry. 
every single time. Well, of course people would notice, this place is dead quiet. Any sound becomes easy to notice. And did you realise they were staring at us though? You didn't lift your eyes from your menu. Well, I have good hearing, I heard people whispering about us. Oh great, we barely just came here already, we've been talked about. You should keep your voice down then if you don't want that. He's never seen June Coon being this blunt before. Well, I don't like having attention drawn to myself, and you guys are getting everyone to look at us, so I'm feeling a bit displeased. They fall into bewildered silence for a few seconds. Is, is it just me, or does the fact he's always goofy just make this now look even more serious? You're all not in agreement. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the oolong tea. It's not too expensive, and I tend to like it. Hmm. Can I maybe afford something to eat too? I also have to eat lunch later. We all exchange glances between each other, silently sharing our thoughts. Oh, please let us pay for your food. What? No, I don't want to take advantage. We'll beg if we have to. But, no buts, we're paying for it. Before you can disagree, I call Tadanori San over to our table. Hey, you guys ready to order? Ah, uh, yeah, can I have an oolong tea, a green tea, two coffees, and a rice cracker platter for the four of us? Tadanori San writes our order on a small notepad and taps it with his pen a few times. Okay, I'll be right back with your order. He walks back to the kitchen, first stopping by the front door to receive some of the people who have just arrived. There, I ordered. Now we'll have a shared plate of snacks to eat. It'll be a waste for you not to not eat them. Ah, well, but you didn't have to order for me. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Wasn't any trouble. No, seriously, you shouldn't have. I hate rice crackers. Is there anything you actually like? In this tea shop? I hardly think so. Seriously, a rich guy who hates tea. That's like a bear who doesn't like honey. Now you're just being specious. Not all bears like honey. Well, do you know any that don't? That's beside the point. If you ask me, that's entirely the point. Yeah. You know, for a guy who looks so cute and innocent, you do have a way of cutting into conversation the exact moment you can cause the most damage. He looks awfully cheeky smiling like that. Well, ignoring his majesty's pickiness. Hey, I was thinking of visiting the park. The cherry trees are supposed to be in bloom today. Ah. June's eyes are nearly sparkling with excitement at hearing those words. It's been years since the last time I saw the cherry trees. Well, I guess at least one of us is excited for it. It's the same thing every year. Seriously, did you come along just to complain? Actually, I was planning on getting new strings for my racket, but that works too. Ugh, remind me again, why do I still invite you to these things? Because you love me. She reached you face palms. You two look like an old married couple. Oh, shut up, shut it. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, Sai is supposed to get off her shift at one and then she'll have her own lunch, so I think we'll be leaving the diner at about two or so. If we leave the diner at about 2.05, we should get to the park by 2.30. That is assuming the train isn't late, of course. Okay, uh, what exactly are we supposed to do at the park? Well, sightseeing. We see these sights every year. Well, I know, but Junkun was living in a different town for the past six years, and it's been a while since he visited the Omaya Park. I figured he'd enjoy walking around and visiting the stores. And are the rest of us supposed to die of boredom in the meantime? We'll be walking around the park in a group of five people. If you manage to get bored doing that, then you certainly deserve a prize. Case K places his hand down on the desk and groans loudly. Again, people whispering. Sorry. Look, it's all well and good that you planned out this whole thing out in for Kobayashi's sake, but aren't we all supposed to be enjoying ourselves here? Going out in this ridiculous seat to a park as far as hell from my house just to see some cherry trees I see every single day is pushing it. Not even all they're cooked up to be, it's not really all that fun. What's wrong with a cherry tree? No, don't! I'll tell you what's wrong with them. Oh, Shuichi and I both groan loudly. Back when I first moved into my current house, my father decided the best way to make me feel comfortable was to have a bunch of cherry blossoms planted just outside the garden at our house. What, you actually had cherry blossoms planted at your house? Yes, now please, let me finish. Anyway, eventually when the trees grew big enough to blossom, he decided to invite a bunch of his friends to come appreciate the sight. Those friends visit, of course, had to bring their horrible spoiled kids with them. So, while the adults were outside taking a tour through our cherry blossom garden, I was forced to stay inside with this big mean bulldog kid who kept tormenting me for the whole day. And when they were finally gone, my dad told me they were repeating this tour for the rest of the week. So? What do you mean so? Cherry blossoms are the reason I was bullied for a whole week as a kid. What, that's your big reason? Yep, it is. Well, it's ridiculous. Also, yep. Hey, none of you are there. 
I don't care if I wasn't there. What sort of backwards logic do you use to end up blaming the cherry blossoms? What's wrong with you? Well, now you're just being mean. Well, you're dead inside. Uh, should I come back later? Oh, damn, we didn't even notice him coming back. Oh, not at all. Actually, do you have any popcorn? This is hysterical. Shut. Yeah, yeah, shut it. Got it. Just get back to fighting. Well, I wasn't, but I... Only then did June finally realise his little outburst had landed everyone's eyes directly on him. Sorry. Tadanori san sets our bowl of crackers and our beverages on the table and leaves us. Well, that's a way of stopping an argument. Who says I was trying to stop it? I pick one of the crackers and plop it in my mouth, smiling smugly at Chuichi. Well, at least one of us is having fun. Oh, so much fun. Well, since you enjoy that, why don't we talk about the stupid things you hate for a second? Go right ahead, I have no such things. Oh yeah? One word. Milk. Well, it tastes weird. No, it doesn't. It tastes like milk. I'd understand if you were allergic, but you're not. You hate milk? Hey, don't laugh at me, Mr. I hate cherry trees. Case K opens his mouth to say something, but no words come out from it. He ends up leaning back in his seat again and looking away. Okay, this is how you want to play, huh? Well, Shuichi hates rock music. Why? What? Dude, you hate rock music? Well, it's just noise. Guys, guys. Tadanori san shows up once again, a perplexed look on his face. Would you please keep it down? The other patrons are complaining about you. Oh, sorry. After giving us the warning, he walks away, leaving all of us looking awkwardly to the sides and disapproving faces of the other patrons. You're right, this is funny. You all start glaring at him, causing him to stop laughing and look down awkwardly. Look, I'm sure you all got a little bit carried away. How about we just pretend nothing ever happened? Okay. Agreed. All right. We sit around in uncomfortable silence, looking down at the table without touching our food. I once caught Urata dancing in the student council room when he thought no one was around. No! We all turn to stare at Shuichi. You want to play with fire? Well, I can play with fire. Orochihara won't... Please, let's not do this again. But well, he started it. I don't care, behave. Fine. Seriously though, dancing? I was bored. What sort of dance was it? No cat. Tango. Why? why? Alright, you behave too. It's bad enough I have to chaperone one man-child. I don't need a second one on my back. Are you calling me a man-child? What? No. Not explicitly. What? Oh, you suck. Thank you. That wasn't a compliment. Too bad I took it as one. Oh, just shut up and eat. All right. I grab a handful of rice crackers and cram them all in my mouth. All right, Ruff. I sound like I'm speaking complete gibberish because of all the food in my mouth. And I am the man-child. Thirty minutes later. Nor was Lich Posh's in the forbidden grave that actually changes elemental affinity every time you hit his weakness. So you have to recross Libra every time you form a super effective hit. Oh, that explains it. I thought he was just some sort of super boss who became immune to his elemental weakness after you hit it once. Nah, that would just be lazy game design. If they did it like that, you'd have to grind for over five hours just to stand a chance using non elemental attacks. You should also earn equip all elemental equipment so rely only on magic casters to get you through it. So, uh, what party setup would you recommend for that fight? Well, the standard would be... The past 10 or 20 minutes, Shuichi and I sat in silence, here and those to have an excited discussion about the latest instalment in the Fantasy Universe series. There's been no chance for us to either weigh in or change the subject whatsoever. But wouldn't having three wizards for that fight make you way too vulnerable to non-elemental magic? Well, as long as you have a cleric with the elemental conversion spell, you should be good. Ah, in that case I could also try. Chuichi taps me on the shoulder, leaning in and whispering in my ear. Do you understand anything they're saying? All I can get from this conversation is Kun likes RPGs, and I, apparently, do not. Even though I actually do like them, this conversation is just so incredibly boring. I have gotten into RPGs before, but never like this. You know, I was actually thinking of trying that game, but I think I'm over it. I hadn't really thought about it this way, so in the end, you... you think they'd notice if we slipped away? Well, I think they wouldn't notice the bomb dropping on top of us. What do you say we pay for the bill and leave? 
You don't think that would be a little rude? Uh, you know what other game I'm looking forward to trying? Dungeon Master 3. Oh yeah, I'm a big fan of the series. Oh, screw this, I'm out. Shuichi gets up to leave and I decide to follow behind him. We barely manage to take two steps when... What do you think, Shuichi-san? Shuichi-san? The first time since their conversation started, someone decides they want our input on it. Damn it. Uh, why are you two going? Well, well, we were, I mean, we, how can I? When it seems his brain is frozen trying to look for response, I slap him top of the head. Oh, we were going to the bathroom. That seemed to work, but together? Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, well, Hector wanted to show me something. <laughs> Sorry, that line's making me laugh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Meanwhile, back at the plot. A what? What? Oh, uh, yeah, Hector said there was something on his, uh, his butt that he wanted to show me. Uh, right, Hector? No, you psycho. Jesus, how can you be that bad at lying? You were going to ditch us, weren't you? Oh, no, uh, yes. Shuichi immediately turns to me, bewildered. Why? Oh, please, like they're going to believe us after that stupid excuse you made up. Oh, we're going to the bathroom, so he's going to show me something on his butt. What are you, eight? You suck at lying. Oh, oh no, I don't. Yes, you do. You kind of do, yeah. Shuichi hangs his shoulders, defeated. Why are you ditching us? Oh, what are we talking to? Which I'm sorry, I didn't notice. So, basically, you drag us all here the pretense of having a good time, and when we finally are doing just that, you decide it's annoying and try to run away? It's kind of crappy of you two. But I... I just... Oh, I didn't. It was Hector's idea. Hey! Oh, sorry, I just had to get the attention off of me. It didn't really work. You know what, let's just move on. I want to swing by the sports ski store anyway. Wait, who says we're going there? You dragged me out to do something I hate, then tried to ditch me in a tea shop you wanted to come to in the first place. You let say more? Oh, let's just go to the damn store. Oh yeah, I've never been to a sporting goods store before. Oh, I guess you could use some new tennis shoes anyway. You even have money in your budget for that. I've been saving up for it, I just wasn't planning on buying it this month. Oh, it's even time for us to go around the shops before we get to the diner. Shuichi pulls his phone out of his pocket and presses the button, lighting up the screen. Well, it's still 11am. I think we can walk around for a bit and still be there by 1pm. So I should get off work around that time, so she might even be able to join us to eat. I wouldn't bet on that happening, but sure, two hours to walk around should be plenty of time. We all walk to the counter and pay our bill. June tries one more time to convince us to let him pay for his portion, but we just ignore him. Please come again. Tadanori san sees us off with a cheerful grin and a bow, waving as we leave the store. After a bit of walking around, we eventually find a large store that sells all the things we need. Once we go in, everyone almost immediately separates. Keikun goes towards the tennis gear, Shuichi produces the volleyball section, and June just walks around aimlessly. Since I'm not particularly fussy about what to buy, I just find a shoe I like, take it to the front counter, and done in, done in less than three minutes. It's not like I'm buying a new one model either way, I'm just buying the exact same as my last one, because it's a bit spent. Unfortunately, the other three don't seem anywhere close to finishing up their business, or in the case of June, finish doing absolutely nothing. I don't want to just sit around and wait either, so I guess I'll just join up with one of them. I will look for Shuichi. Let's see, Shuichi should be at the volleyball section. And that is... Ah, there he is. I find Shuichi holding the volleyball, tossing between his hands and giving it a few squeezes. Oh, too soft. Hey, what are you up to? Shopping for my birthday gift. Oh, sure, your birthday's in three months and yet here I am, shopping for a gift already. Oh, you want to make sure to buy it early so you won't run the risk of them running out of stock. Oh, how nice. He puts the ball back on its pedestal and grabs hold of another one. For real though, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to find a new ball. My old one is a bit warm. Why don't you pick a random one? Not like you get to play with your own ball during matches. Exactly. That's why I'm trying to find something as close to standard issue as possible. If I get it used to a ball that's too light or too heavy, it'll mess with my game. Plus, there's always the matter of durability. Hmm. What's even the point if you only practice at school either way? Well, I need to have a practice partner to train my setups. Unfortunately, this store doesn't sell practice partners. It does, however, sell balls, which I can at least use to practice my serve. You know, 
You should stop refining your serve already. That thing's scary enough as it is. He shrugs. Well, I figure I'm already called on the accuracy fund, but my serve isn't really all that potent yet. You're kidding, your arm's a friggin' cannon. Uh, I can't hurt to improve. Only scoring a ton of service aces can't end up hurting our chances in the inter high. Are you sure you're not trying to do everything on your own? Now you're trying to score all the points by yourself. Well, not all the points, just as many as I can. You say potato, I say potato. He chuckles, give me a small pat on the back. Oh, don't worry. I promise I'm not biting off more than I can chew. It's just a practice and it's fun. For you, at least. It's always a wonder seeing how many players come out from your court barely able to walk after you handle practice. Oh, come on, that's not fair. I'm not that strict on them. Didn't you have four first years quitting on the first week this year? Look, I won't say anything, okay? Just try to match up to your teammates pay for you end up killing someone. I will do. Oh hey, this ball is pretty close to what I want. He never changes, does he? Twenty minutes later. Did everyone get what you're looking for? Yep. Yep. I wasn't really looking for anything. Well good, then we're all done with the shopping, just in time too. How about we head to the diner? Oh good, I've started to get really hungry. Oh, no wonder it's almost 1pm, plus we've been walking around for a while. I wonder how full the diner must be right now. It's lunchtime on a Saturday, I think it's safe to assume the place will be packed. Oh, no problem. I texted Sarah a while ago and asked her to save us a seat right around 1pm. But we'll have to get there soon. We well, don't, well, don't want to get her in trouble with the bosses for it. Hey, you're crafty and I gave you credit for Arata. I'm well, glad you're finally taking note of my talents. Oh please, any five-year-old with a cell phone could have done that. Could have, should have, would have, didn't. Can we please just hurry to the diner? I don't really like being outside in the crowd. Oh god, not this again. June's tail is lashing rapidly from one side to the other and I can see him slowly walking over towards me. My arm is still recovering from the last death grip. Okay people, hurry up, this is a matter of life or death. The diner is completely packed, with the waitresses running around to try and serve all customers in a timely manner. No matter how hard I look, I can't find Sire on an empty seat. Wah. Damn, I knew it'd be full, but I wasn't expecting it to be like this. Ah, oh, there you are. Sire shows up from behind a huge group of people and hurries to us. I've got to give it to her. She moves very gracefully among all these stacks of chairs. Yo, Sire chan any luck saving us a table? Hee <laughs> hee, of course I got one. It's close to the back, though. It's the only way to keep new customers from taking it. Come on, follow me. Sai guides her through a giant labyrinth of chairs and people. Walking through this mess is a lot harder than she makes it seem. I almost trip on someone's tail or feet or a chair quite a few times. It's hard to avoid bumping into others. We reach a small table for four right next to the entrance to the kitchen and when seated. Sai doesn't waste her time pulling out a notepad to taking our order. Hello masters, thank you for joining us today. Sorry about the wait. <laughs> Do you guys know what you want to order? Okay, this was funny the first time, but it's gotten old already. Please don't do that. Agreed. Oh, I like it. It's weird seeing Mitsugishi stand talking like that. It just doesn't fit the image I have her in my mind. Sai's entire body relaxes and she takes a deep sigh. Oh, Christ, thank God. My face is already tired from all this smiling. So, do you guys know what you'll have? Please choose quickly though, my boss only let me hold the table empty for 15 minutes because I promised her I'd get you guys in and served as fast as bunnily possible. Well, I guess since we don't have much time to be picky, I'll just go with a regular burger and fries. Uh, same here. Oh, it's been a while since the last time I ate a good burger. Same for me. Wow, so much originality. Uh, give me a burger and fries too. Alright, thanks for the help guys. I'll come by to ask about drinks when the burgers are close to coming out. Sure, uh, thanks for saving us a table. You got it, be right back. Sire takes a few seconds to breathe in and turns her mo back, act back on, walking into the crowd of awaiting patrons. Well, I can't say she's not good at a job. Yeah, I was expecting to be a comically useless waitress, but she's actually very competent. Could do without the act, though. You mean you don't like the maid, sir? That's so mean of you, master. Oh, huh? June suddenly tries to imitate the same cute act that Sire had been employing. Destructive power is off the charts. Oh, you're pretty good at this too, Junkun. Uh, maybe you've got talent for this job. You should definitely be a maid. What? But I'm a guy. Just imagine how cute he'd look in a maid costume. 
Well, a pervert? I'm sitting with a huge pervert. Oh, shut up. I'm just kidding. Really? You swear? Yes, I promise that I'm not picturing a maid costume. Okay. I totally am, though. It's too good to ignore. By the way, do any of you know when the Moon Festival is going to be held this year? Uh, June 15, why? Well, my father is due to eccentricity. He decided to buy a booth area for this year's festival and wants me to tend to it. Well, why would he do that? I told one of the female servants that one of my friends is also a maid at a cafe, and that somehow got reported to my father. And for some reason that's beyond me, he says I too should have an experience with customer service. Uh, to keep you humble, he said. That's uh, not a bad idea, actually. The reason is all over the place, but it's not a bad idea. It sounds interesting enough. You think he'll actually go through with it? Who knows? My old man is weirder than Pee Wee German. He can't really be all that bad. He once bought a pair of moustache glasses and started wearing them around the house for a month. No reason for it. He just said he wanted to try a new style. Okay, so he's a bit peculiar. Well, nothing bad about that. If you say so, I just don't like getting involved in his crazy ideas. He makes the weirdest purchases investments I've ever seen. Don't they always work, though? I read a few magazine articles about him that said he'd buy stocks and investments no one else would. They were clearly failing. Or if the market had turned around, it would become hugely popular. Yeah, that actually happened. My father's business sense is scary, to say the least. I don't even question him on his purchases anymore, because somehow he always seems to be right. Or maybe it's insider trading. I actually thought that too. It wouldn't really make sense. He's way too random for it to be that. Maybe he just acts weird to throw people off his track. If that's true, then it's a goddamn evil mastermind. Hey, Roshihara, I just realised something. You've never talked about your mother before. It's not much to talk about. She is a common woman who used to work on my father's company and got involved with him. When she got pregnant with me, he sent her away to take care of me by herself. His wife divorced him and he didn't find a new one, so he ended up taking me in when I was too little to inherit the company. Of course, that all means nothing if he has another son. In that case, I'd just be cast out and the new kid would inherit everything. Oh wow, that's awful. Your father actually told you he'd do that. Well, not really, but it's implicit. Plus, it's not like I care either way. I never wanted to take over his company in the first place. Well, you certainly seem nonchalant about it. So I guess that's our thing now. We share stories about our fucked up households. Why don't you tell us yours then? I've never heard you talk about your father. Did he skip out on you? Uh, how, how about we avoid the depressing conversations for now? This isn't exactly dinner table conversation. Well, I know about it. You basically raised your brother yourself, didn't you? You're just ignoring me. Yeah, since my dad wasn't around, I took care of Aki whenever Mom wasn't home. Hey, don't you start ignoring me too. Sorry, Chuichi, I'm fine though. Honestly, it's not like it was a bad thing either. Aki and I are really close thanks to it. You mean to say you're a super brocon, right? Ew, don't say that. Just hearing those words coming out of your mouth makes me queasy. Yeah, sure. I haven't met your brother yet. Oh, Aki? Oh, you like him. Total opposite of this, lazy bum. Nowadays, it's hard to tell which one is the older brother. Oh, shut up. You can tell, clearly tell I'm the oldest. Yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure your brother takes after your mom. Super responsible and mature. A hard time believing he's a 12-year-old. Oh, plus Aki's hella cute. Oh, he's definitely going to be a heartbreaker when he's older. God, I hope not. He's too nice for that. Says so one of the nicest guys I've ever met, who's also broken more hearts than I have won. Well... What do you mean, hector San is a heartbreaker? Ah, uh, that's right, I sometimes forget you knew. hector San doesn't know how to say no to people he's not familiar with. He's got this stupid desire to please strangers. He's also pretty popular with the girls to boot. He basically gets asked out by a girl, can't say no, dates for a couple of weeks, then he stops talking to her and answering her until she breaks up with him. Classic modus operandi. That's... that's not... A frightening part, he still gets girls confessing to him despite him having a reputation as a player. A very ill-gained one at that, I most certainly am not a player. Oh, not just girls either, he had a guy confess to him once last year. What, did you go out with him too? What? No, 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 of course not. I turned him down flat out. Oh, I actually saw the confession. You hesitated. Of course I hesitated. Didn't you get the memo? I can't say no to people. I have a strong urge to slap these two for laughing at me like this. Hmm. What's up, June? Oh, it's just it sounds a little unfair. What do you mean? 
for girls who confess to you and when you say yes to them should mean you feel the same. So if you accept their feelings only to slowly cut off contact till they break up with you, sounds like you're dealing more damage than you would if you just said no. Ugh. I hadn't thought of it like that. That's because you never think things through. I told you multiple times you'd start turning them down but you don't listen. Well at least it gives you something to think about. Yeah. Oh god, what have I done? Hey guys, I'm back. Oh Hector, what's wrong with your face? I was born with it. No, no, not that. You look upset. Did something happen? Oh, well, I... Oh no, wait. I don't have time to chat. We're packed up. Sorry, I'll talk to you later. I just came by to ask about drinks. What will you guys have? Oh, you guys suck. Again, sorry, but we're really busy right now. Anyway, drinks. You guys having them? Well, those burgers are actually pretty good. Even though the place was jam-packed, the kitchen still managed to get our food out in record time. You also need to give Saya props how well she deals with everything. The service is excellent even when the house is full. Well, I told you before, the food here is excellent. That's why I come here so often. Sure, that's why. Miss ogishi san should be out any minute now, right? She hasn't shown up in front of the house for a while now. I think she's gone to the back to have a lunch and leave. Well, either way, we've already finished eating, so we shouldn't hold this tail if we're going to order anything more. Well, that's true, let's just pay the bill and wait out front. We vacate our table and make our way to the cashier table to make our payment. Make it up to you, Miki. Oh, don't worry about it so much, Saya chan You covered me a bunch of times before. I never did anything to thank you for it. Saya is already here by the time we arrive. She spots us approach and smiles at us. Oh, hey guys, you about done? Uh, yeah, we're coming over to pay the bill. Oh, sure, Miki, their table total 5,850 yen. All right, thanks, Saya chan Whoa, you <clears throat> point voice. Wow, we got our table memorised. Hey, I have all my tables memorised. I am excellent at my job, after all. Saya has a great memory, so it's no wonder. Ah, uh, let me handle payment. You guys just pay me back later. Shuichi walks up to the cashier and starts chatting with her. So what do you guys have planned for today? I cancelled the shift for it, so it better be good. Shuichi didn't tell you. Are we going to the park to watch the cherry blossoms? Ooh, flower scene. How romantic. Been a lot better if we had made a picnic, though. Sure. Eat while, eat while a bunch of flower petals fall on your food and drinks. Talk about romantic. Papa, you're such a spoil sport, K-chan. Well, don't call me K-chan. Anyway, I like it. It sounds like it'll be fun. No, it doesn't. Oh, shut up. You're dead inside anyway. Jeez, I'm not even allowed to have an opinion anymore. Okay, all done. You guys ready to go? Yeah, lead the way. Outside the diner, a comfortable breeze blows. I close my eyes and enjoy the comfortable wind ruffling my fur. This really is a godsend in this particularly hot day. Ah. June notices it too, letting his fur flutter against the wind. Well, the weather sure took a nice turn all of a sudden. Is the world telling us it likes our plans? Well, I certainly don't mind them. Whoa! Someone comes running off the street and bumps into me. Oh, careful. Shuichi rats fast and grabs me before I can fall to the ground. The other person is as lucky. Hey, watch where you're going, will you? Ow, ow, ow. Four on the ground is a small Akita girl, rubbing her back with a painful expression on her face. Are you alright? Here, let me help. Sarah extends a helping hand and the girl takes hold of it, propping herself up. Thanks, will you? Watch where you're going. What if I gotten seriously hurt? What? Well, but I... You know, the one should watch it. What are you doing running around the middle of the street? Of course you're going to bump into someone. You should be the one apologising. What if I'm so much smaller than he is, huh? As soon as her eyes focus on me, they go wide. You! Her expression immediately turns sharp and she points at me with a yell. You know her? Not that I recall. Oh, I can't believe I'd run into you here. Talk about an interesting turn of me. Akiko, wait. Another Akita runs the waters from the crowd. He stops dead in his tracks and he sees the girl and walks up to her with a look of concern. Damn it, Mikiko, I told you not to go running off on your own. Oh, you end up bumping... Oh, you're talking to someone. Are these people you know? Oh, not really. Your friend that came running and crashed into my friend here. Wow, jeez, Mikiko, I told you this was going to happen. Ah, uh, whatever. Look you, look who it is. She points at me, euphoric. I have to take a step back so finger nearly jabs me in the face. Whoa, careful then. The boy follows a pointing finger and as soon as his eyes follow my face. Ugh. See, see, what did I tell you? Um, 
sorry. What the hell is going on here? The boy seems to completely ignore me. Oh, I never thought I'd run into you in the middle of the street. I wanted to meet you in person for the longest time. Hmm. A lot bigger than I thought you'd be. I guess that makes sense. You guys know Hector from somewhere. Why? I sure do. He's been my idol for the longest time. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you again. That's going to be loads of fun. I wish you could stay in chat. We're actually late. Go on, Mikiko. We have to hurry. Yeah, are you going to do a declaration of war or something? Well, we silly. There's no need for that. See you at the end of the month, Miss Shimaya san. Bye. He grabs the girl's wrist and drags her on the crowd. She kicks and protests. Oh, wait, I didn't get your name. Well, well that was odd. You think it was someone new about you as a tennis player? Oh, have to be. There's no other logical explanation for what happened. What just happened isn't logical, no matter how you try to explain it. Ah. We all jump in surprise, we hear Keikun shouting from behind us. Once he notices our reaction, he quickly apologises. Oh sorry, but that doesn't matter right now. I knew that guy was familiar to me. You know him, Orochihara-san? Yeah, I do. He's a rising star in the world of tennis. One year younger than me, so he should be a first year in high school by now. He is unknown until two years ago, so I'm not surprised you haven't heard of him. Oh, so when he said see you at the end of the month, he must have met the prefecturals. Yeah, it must have been that. His name is Yumiya Kokonos. To say he's a genius is put it mildly. This sort of guy who plays completely by instinct. There's not real logic behind what he does, and he adapts to everything you do crazy fast too. He's sort of player I hate playing against the most. Uh, that description reminds me of someone actually. Shuichi looks at me, Case K and Saya follow his gaze, not in the long. It's the build spot only if I must say. Yeah, he's definitely very similar to Hector Sun. The biggest difference between you two is his style is more Explosive? I don't really know how to put it. If you don't focus too much on strategy, you're still always trying to come up with a way to avoid your opponent's strengths and play to their weaknesses. He doesn't. He willingly plays against them in their own games and let himself adapt. He's crazy fast too. You can be completely crushing him in one game and get the tables completely reversed on you in the next one. Played against him three times and haven't won once. You would think it'd be trouble for Hector if they ended up playing each other. To say if he's still the same way he was two years ago when I last played, you might say no, but I doubt he is. Shuichi puts a hand on my shoulder. Well, I guess that just means you have one more rival to worry about. So if I didn't have enough already, he gives me a reassuring smile, though it doesn't really do much to take my mind off it. You were a coconut, huh? A player just like me? If we end up playing each other, that might end up as an interesting twist of fate. Not that I believe in those things, of course. Uh, guys? Yeah? Don't we start to take a train to the park? Does it have a fixed schedule? Ah! Oh shit, that's right. Come on, we're gonna have to run to the station. What? But I. No buts, we're gonna lose it. Didn't you know what just happened teach you guys anything about running on the street? Ah, thank the gods for warm water. A good bath is all I needed today. God, how my bed looks inviting right now. Sheesh, I feel drained even though we didn't do much today. Well, I guess we ended up running around a lot. Aniki, I found those videos you asked me to look for. Ah, thanks, thanks, Aki. I'll be down in just a second. Oh, no rest of the wicked, I suppose. Aki's on the couch, fiddling around the laptop and plugging it into the TV. What's with the sudden interest in other players? Well, I ran into the guy in the street today, and one of my friends told me he might be troubled, so I just got curious. Hmm. Well, from what I saw in the video, I don't think he will. But then again, the video is from last year. He turns on the TV and immediately opens to a paused video of a tennis court. The quality is not that great, but then again this was taken from a phone. He presses the play button as the screen comes to life. In it I see the image from behind a certain Akita as he runs around returning all of his opponent's shots. Go you! You yeah, you can do it! You're cool, I love you! You're cool, go out with me! Oh, he seems to be insanely popular. He reminds me a bit of you, actually. His style is very similar, too. I can see that. I guess he wasn't kidding when he said I was his idol. Did he base his play style around imitating mine, or was it just coincidence? Well, either way, I don't think there's much for you to worry about. He's good, but his shots lack power. He's not as precise, and his footwork is crude. When did you become an expert on the subject? Oh, please, I've been watching you since I was a kid. Of course I can tell the difference between the imitation and the real thing. Ah, huh, still... Something about this guy bothers me, but I can't quite put my finger on it. 
Well, you can stay here watching the vid if you want. I'm going out with friends tomorrow morning, so I'm crashing early. Good night. Yeah, night, Aggie. I run my hand round his head, ruffling his fur. He gives me a warm smile and goes back upstairs. Why do you make me feel so uneasy? Well, I guess I don't have much more to gain from staring in this video. As Zaki pointed out, his style is basically a carbon copy of mine taking down a few pegs. I don't see any reason to worry. And yet... I turn off the TV and the laptop. I guess I'm off to bed. Here we go, that was day seven. We'll pick up the next day, day eight in the next video. Day eight, day nine then. Day ten, which I'm looking forward to. So, until then, bye for now.